Hi, it's Cheryl with JuicingGardener.com, and yes, you're going to see me today. I've had a couple requests to actually see what I look like. I'm not just a voice in a garden. Anyway, um, today is a perfect day for me to give you a, a tour of my all my gardens. It's mid-July 2014, and I'm going to show you a grand tour of all of them, and then I'm going to focus on each one in its own video. So I'm going to turn you around and show you my place. Okay, first, this is right as I go in my back door. This is my favorite greenhouse, which you've seen on several of my videos. That I just love starting things in here and growing things, getting them the seedling started in here. And down there is my cloning project, which I have a couple of videos on, uh, cloning tomatoes, and I'll tell you about, more about that. So that's my only greenhouse right now. Then this big garden here is my semi-shade garden and mostly it's greens. I have some tomatoes up here in the sunny corner, but mostly it's all my greens. Then this one down here is my renegade uh, garden that I had overflow and I had all these plants I didn't know what to do with and I don't have it fenced in. That's why it's called the renegade garden because it's not fenced. Uh, the deer have already found it and been munching. But anyway, I'm gonna be fencing that soon and growing that soon. And then here's my other big garden that is the pollinating garden. I think almost every single thing in there has to be pollinated by bees. Tomatoes, zucchinis, cucumbers, watermelons. Um, and that was just jam-packed, so we're gonna do another video on that one. But right now we're gonna start with the uh, green garden. So welcome to my greens garden. We'll start off, I'll work all the way over here. Sorry about the walking, I'll try and be not too jiggly. I have tables. I like everything at waist high when I can. For one, for saving my, my back over the years. It's nice to not have to bend down your knees all the time when you're gardening. And number two, it saves the animals from getting to them because when they're on the ground like this, the little baby bunnies get in. The big ones can't fit in, but the babies can. And the chipmunks, and they eat a lot more when it's down on the ground than up on the tables. So here I have all the snap, sugar snap peas. And I know I should be growing them up high and with strings up on trellises, but I just basically let them flow over the table and grow up the fence. And they're just doing beautifully. I've just picked a few already, but you can see they're doing fantastic. And we love kale. Um, I use it for juicing, smoothies, kale chips, and sometimes salads. I'm not, I don't love it in salads, but I'm finding a way, uh, finding some good recipes to, to tolerate it because it is extremely nutritious. But the kale chips are phenomenal. Um, anyway, we have all different kinds. Dinosaur kale, curly kale, um, riborb kale. I can't remember all the names of them. We've got more kale over here. That's all red Russian kale, all of that is. And it's been doing very well. Last year, my kale got wiped out, literally wiped out by the, um, the green cabbage worm. And this year, I've only had a little bit, and I've been picking them off. I haven't used any uh, pesticides. This is an all-organic garden, by the way. My cilantro is doing fantastic. These are the leftover tomatoes I don't know what to do with. I'm just out of pots, out of soil, and out of season. <laughs> so they're just sitting there just to experiment. This is my spinach, and I've never done well with spinach. It goes right to bolting. I mean, literally, I'll get some little baby leaves off of this, but it, it, it bolts immediately. So somebody come down in the comment section and tell me how to grow spinach without it going to bolt, please. Okay, then back over here, we have this fantastic basil plant that I've been just eating and eating and eating, and it keeps growing and growing. It's finally going to bolt a little bit. So uh, I picked off a lot of leaves, put them in a great pesto sauce the other day, but I put it in salads every day. And the lettuce has bolted. So I'm getting ready to pull these out. That was romaine and it was delicious. And that's, I think, a flame lettuce. I'm getting ready to use up those last leaves, pull it out and put all new lettuces in. There are some uh, baby romaine. And I love eating them baby like this. So sometimes I'll let them grow big and sometimes they're baby. And some peppers down here. See, these are, what's the name of these? I can't remember. Um, I have so many varieties. I can't read it. Jimmy Nerdello. <laughs> anyway, they're going to be very sweet, but they're turning red right there. You can see the greens. Oh, I got a little bit of fade on that one. That'll be picked in a couple days. A lot of buds coming up on these peppers. Some baby reds back there that are still green. More tomatoes that didn't have pots. I had so many tomato plants. I think I'm going to start selling them in the driveway next year. These are doing super well. 
Red cabbage, mm, I don't know if we're gonna see heads or not. They don't do great in, ca in containers, at least the way I've done them, but I'm gonna give it a sure, tr give it a try. Pepper row, the peppers have not done as well in the shade. I highly recommend sun only for the peppers. They're doing okay, but I have seen them do much better. And also we got attacked by slugs really bad uh, about a month ago. More kale. More kale. See how different the kale looks? That one there, I think, is premier or premium. I can't remember. Uh, premium? That's the dinosaur or lacinato. Got like five different types of kale. This is my only cilantro from seed. It's kind of, it's kind of wimpy, but it's doing its thing. And all these seeds I planted over here for lettuce, they never came up. So I just planted new cilantro seeds. Some baby basil. I tried spinach again over there. Okay, and then pepper plants, so we're coming down the home stretch. Now this was a big experiment. Since the peppers did so poorly down there, the slugs had just a bountiful feast on the peppers. I had a lot of plants and I thought, well, I'll try them in these trays. I just couldn't imagine that that would be deep enough. I think they're eight inches deep, but they're doing beautifully. I got all these little flowers coming out, see, right there. And those are all going to turn into little peppers. So I'm very encouraged, even though the slugs ate some of the leaves, see like there, that's what a slug does in one night. Um, I put, took a lot of the leaves off. There's more slug activity. But since I've put them up in the trays here, they've been just outstanding. And I've got garlic chives, rosemary and basil, and that soil right there, uh, what did I put in there? A whole other tray of lettuce. But I'll tell you, the lettuce is doing way better in that little greenhouse than it does out here in the shade. And then lastly, here are the tomatoes I put in, in the sunny corner. And they're doing pretty well. Um, not quite as well as, as down on the uh, other bed, but I'm pretty happy with them. We've got cherry tomatoes, I've got brandywine, beef steak. Oh, and the cauliflower, mm, didn't make it. Snails totally ate that one. This cauliflower, hmm. Mostly I use the leaves for like kale chips. I put the, the cauliflower leaves in with the kale chips. I uh, don't know if we're going to get ahead or not. <laughs> I'm looking down in there. I think I think we probably won't. And then my last tomato. So that is my shady greens garden. Overall, I'm very pleased with it. Uh, I need to put another table in for next year. More trays. I love the trays. So anyway, next video will be my renegade one. And then the one after that will be my pollinating garden. So please make sure you subscribe to my channel and always comment and give us thumbs up if you like the video. I sure appreciate that. And um, when you get subscribed to the channel, you get to see all the videos when they come out. So I will see you on the next video. Thanks so much. It's Cheryl signing off.